Hey guys, welcome to your next PHP front to back video. In this video, we're going to be looking at the include and require statements in PHP. And what these do is they allow us to insert PHP code, uh, markup, text into another PHP file. And it saves you a ton of time and saves you from writing uh, a ton of code, especially if you're using it with HTML. Um, so what I'm going to do here is in PHP sandbox, I'm going to create a new folder and we're just going to call this website one okay because there's going to be times where we're using multiple files and I want to keep those bunched into one folder for that for that particular video okay so we might have website two website three and so on so I'm going to create in here a file and let's save it as index.php alright so let's pretend that this is just a very simple website we'll also create a file called about dot php and let's create one more called contact dot php alright so we have these three files I'm gonna start in index php and I'm just gonna put in some basic HTML we'll just say my website and then we'll have a heading and let's just say home because this is the home page and let's just put in a footer I haven't used Sublime in a while. I've been using Atom, which doesn't finish your, your HTML tags, so I might do that a couple times. So in the footer, we'll just put, let's say, a paragraph, and we'll just say, um, my website, uh, copyright 2017. Okay, it doesn't really matter what we put here. So let's save that, and let's open it up over here with localhost slash php sandbox slash website one all right so there's our beautiful website now what i'm going to do is just copy this and put it in about actually you know what before we do that let's create a simple navigation menu so right above the h1 we'll put a ul and this isn't going to be pretty at all and let's put an a tag and we'll, this will go to this file which is index.php and in here we'll just say home okay let's copy that and then we'll put our boat and contact alright so now let's grab all of this save it and then let's paste it in here and we'll just change the h1 to about everything else is going to stay the same and same with contact all right so now if we reload we have this little website now uh, just try to picture this as a, a, a real website a much larger website where there's a lot of code there's a lot of um, meta tags and all that now when you create different pages you're not going to want to repeat that you're not going to want to have all the same code the only difference between all three of these is this H1. Okay, you're going to have one piece of content that's different. And you can you can really save some time by using includes or requires. So, what I'm going to do here is in website 1, let's create a new folder and we'll call it ink. Okay, often you'll see this or, or it will just say includes. And inside here we're going to create a new file and let's save that as header.php okay and then we'll create another one and save that as footer.php I'm sure you guys know what I'm getting at um, so in the index file let's grab everything above the h1 and we'll cut that and then we're gonna put that in the header file save it and close it okay um, and then back in index let's take everything below the h1 cut it put it in the footer file save it and close it okay so now for our index page if we save it like this and reload obviously we just see the h1 but we can actually include those two files that we just created so to do that we'll do php include okay and then we just need the location which is in the ink folder slash header dot php okay and then we can just copy that put it there and then just change this to footer 
Okay, so if we save that and reload, we get our navigation back, our footer, our head tags, everything. And just to show you that it's really working, let's go to header and let's change, um, we'll just say home one, save it, reload, and you'll see that that's actually coming from this header file. All right, uh, and then what you wanna do is just basically, we'll just copy this whole thing, go to about, paste that in, we'll just change that to about. Okay, same thing with contact. All right, so if we go ahead and reload, and you can see now we can navigate between pages and the actual PHP pages. Wow, why is that not? Oh, it's looking at it as HTML. Let me just change that. All right, so you can see how helpful this is. Um, now all we have to worry about on each page is the main content. We don't have to deal with the, the header and all that stuff. All right, now if we were to include a file that's really not there, okay, let's say header one and reload. Whoops, we need to go to a home. And now you'll see we get a warning saying that that file's not there. But it does continue to run the script and you can see it outputs home still. Now the difference between include and require is that if we use require and we reload it, it's not going to continue the script it gives you a fatal error okay so when you're when you're trying to figure out which one you want to use include or require use require if you don't want the script to continue if you if 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 that file doesn't load and you want everything to just halt then use require if you want it to keep going regardless then use include okay um, you can also use require once I'll just put that back to header okay so you can use require once and this is identical to require except that PHP will check the file uh, to check and see if it's already been included and if it has it won't include it or require it again all right so let me just I'm just going to use each statement on each page just so you guys have it so that's require once on about we'll do require and then contact we'll, we'll use include all right and you can also do it like this like a, a function format if you want to do that you'll see that still works okay so that is include and require all right, so we're going to start getting into some more some more useful stuff um, than just you know looking at variables and, and stuff like that. So um, I plan for this series to be pretty long. Um, we're going to go all the way up to you know creating classes that that work with databases and things like that. All right, so try and stay tuned, and that's it. I'll see you in the next video.